I wanted to start putting together collection style videos. I've done some stuff like this in the past with like new apps and updated apps, but I wanted to start focusing on different categories. So this video is focused solely on starter apps for getting into the iPad or maybe taking better advantage of an iPad you might already have. In the future, I'm gonna cover different style collections like pro apps and stuff that replace stock apps and so on. These will be mixed in with my other videos as well. I'll go ahead and put these in a playlist so they're easy to find in the future, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the best starter apps for the iPad. PDF Expert is the best app I've used for managing and editing PDFs. In PDF Expert, you can easily browse the Files app, grab a document, and do what you need to with it. With this app, you can annotate, sign, and edit PDF documents. So if you need to clarify something, you can just highlight it or underline. Then you can edit a document using text boxes so you can fill in a PDF without having to print it out, fill it in, and then scan it back in. After that, you can sign a document. You can save multiple signatures in PDF Expert as well. So if you have a partner or somebody else that you work with, you can just insert those signatures. I use this app almost daily now. It's the easiest way for working with PDF documents. Highlights is a PDF research app. This app is split into two categories. On the left-hand side, you have the PDF document, and on the right side, you have the notes section. You can highlight, underline, strike through text on the PDF document, and then it'll show up on the right-hand side. You can also add comments and images. This is great for creating a summary of a large document. You can pull out all the important bits and just reference those when you need them. This way you don't have to scroll through a whole document looking for a very specific snippet of text. You can also turn off the notes field if you just want to read through a document. MindNode is a mind mapping app that has an amazing design. Mind mapping is great for large projects and seeing how all the different parts might connect. I do this for anything with a lot of information. MindNode has a great design. You can start with the core node, your project, then use the floating menu to build out the branches from there. This allows you to quickly build out the mind map. You can make a new child branch from where you are in the mind map or add a new branch at the same level. MindNode recently added an outline view. You can use this as an overlay view or in full screen mode. Either way, you can add content to the outline. If you use the overlay mode, you can tap on anything and it will highlight that in the mind map. This is a great alternative view to a mind map, especially if you're somebody that prefers bulleted lists. Drafts is a text editor, scratch pad, and text automation app all rolled into one. This may seem like a lot, but it does a great job at striking a balance. The way this works is when you open the app, you are treated with a blank draft. You can use this as a scratch pad. I use this to store snippets of text I need to reference throughout the day. You can also select previously created drafts to open as well. If you don't want to automatically start a new draft, hit the I button at the bottom. I leave this on for my iPad, but off for my iPhone. I also use drafts as a text editor. When writing scripts or any long form markdown document, I do it here. There's also a ton of automations you can build for drafts. And if you don't want to build your own, there's a site where community built actions live. I've been using a few that take your drafts, make a note out of them, and then send them to craft. I also have some templates stored in drafts actions as well. By pressing one button, I can load those templates into a draft and start filling them out. GoodNotes is an app that focuses on handwriting with the Apple Pencil. The stuff I've seen people create with this app is bonkers. You can select from different page templates and styles, or you can even import your own. I've imported some templates like my weekly planner and daily journal. GoodNotes can be used to write out notes, journal, or just about anything else. They added a new feature to add stickers to your document so you can add extra information. This is great so you can show people where they need a sign or add some extra side notes. If you want to turn your iPad into a digital notebook, GoodNotes is the app to try. Concepts is a drawing app that gives you an infinite canvas. Now, if you told me you would give me a million dollars, heck, make it ten million dollars, and all I had to do was draw a proper stick figure, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. But Concepts is more than just a drawing stick figure app. Because of the infinite canvas, you can use the Apple Pencil to plan out, well, just about anything and never run out of space. 
I also really like its tool and color selector. It's this wheel that you can select a tool from, and after you select a tool, you can tap on it again to change the way it works or see a preview of it. You can also go into their brush market and pick other options like specific kinds of pens. Tap on the color to get the color wheel, and you can spin this around and find a specific color, but once you have a color, you can select the star icon to see different palettes. You can also create your own palettes as well. Under this section, there is a dynamic palette area. This is based on the color you have selected. This is extremely helpful for matching colors. Concepts is a great app, not just for drawing, but for planning out any project. One of my favorite accessories to go along with the iPad and Apple Pencil is Paperlike. Paperlike is a channel sponsor, and what it is is a textured screen protector. So how this works is when you're using your Apple Pencil with your iPad, it gives a more paper and pen style feedback rather than plastic on glass, which is not a good feeling at all. I use a Paperlike every single day on my iPad Pro, and I really like it. It works really well with apps like GoodNotes and Concepts, two apps that we've talked about already. Paperlike is the perfect product to take your Apple Pencil and iPad to the next level, whether you're drawing, note taking, or just using the Apple Pencil to control the interface. I'll put my link in the description below to where you can go and check out the Paperlike. Dark Noise is, well, a noise app. It has a ton of different background noises, stuff like rainfall, river, coffee shop, and so many more. Dark Noise is great when you need to be super focused, but the world around you is just noisy. You can make mixes with the built-in sounds. I made one that sounds like camping and I love it. When I'm writing, I throw on noise canceling headphones, turn on that scene and bust out the words I'm saying now. If you have trouble focusing or just need to drown out the world around you, I highly recommend Dark Noise. Fontcase is the best app for installing third-party fonts on iPadOS. You can download the font from Safari, point Fontcase to it and install it. The one downside is the only way to do this is using profiles, which is annoying. Because for some reason there aren't a lot of apps that take advantage of the native font installer API. In fact, I can only think of two. So for now, when I need to install a font, I use Fontcase so other apps can access it. Yoink is my desktop on the iPad. This app I keep in slide over and rarely open in full screen. I use this to store files I need temporarily, stuff like images, apps to check out, or code I copy from websites like Stack Overflow. Yoink has this cool ability to stack items and create a group. Right now, I'm gathering links to interesting Thunderbolt devices I can use with the new iPad Pro. Yoink is a great place for temp files, documents, images, links, whatever. It's 2021, we have iPadOS 14, but no built-in calculator app. Now, you can use Search as a calculator, but that's not great if you have a lot happening in a calculation. Enter pCalc. pCalc is a scientific calculator and way more than what I need, but unlike a lot of other calculator apps on the iPad, it has support for system features like split view, slide over, and even shortcut support. There's also a ton of icons, themes, and a very interesting about screen. You may not need a scientific calculator, but if you're watching this video, you probably care about using good apps on your device, so check out pCalc. Goodlinks is a read it later app. I'm sure all of you have been surfing the web 90 style, come across an article you want to read or a video you'd like to watch, but don't have time for it. Save it to Goodlinks. Goodlinks saves all those articles and presents them in a nice reader view. You can also tap on them and load them in the original web page. Goodlinks has a tagging system that is pretty great. This allows you to save things into categories. I break things down by newsletters, blog posts, and even YouTube videos. Goodlinks is a great app for all the links for stuff that you just didn't have time for in the moment, but you want to come back to. So that's it. That's the best starter apps for the iPad. Like always, I will put links to everything I mentioned in the description below. And let me know in the comments what your favorite iPad app is right now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. It really does help out. Subscribe if you haven't already and uh, have a great day.